How you doing today? I'm Brett Vidian with Remax Integrity out of Marion, Illinois. I'm down here in Pope County, Golconda today off of Grand Pierre Road. We have a 110.9 acre farm. There's a beautiful little cabin that needs some work. Gorgeous pond that's full of bass, bluegill, catfish, crappie. Got a great area right here. You can see there's probably four or five acres of open ground right here. Be a great place for food plots. In the summertime, you could come in and do sunflowers, give you a heck of a view out of that little cabin up there. Would make a great spot to do VRBO or Airbnb. And you probably produce enough income to be able to pay the payments on this property. Getting back to this, I'd plant some clover and chicory up here for the deer. You're surrounded by 33,653 acres of Shawnee National Forest. So when you talk about location, 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 this farm right here has it. You have 111 acres basically that hunts like 33,754 acres when you add your piece of property into it. This property was logged probably five or six years ago. As you can see, it's very diverse. You have your pines from the Shawnee National Forest. There is some thickets from where things have been logged. There's still plenty of oak trees to produce hard mass acorns and stuff like that for your deer. Um, with this being logged, it's produced great bedding areas and great nesting areas for the deer and the turkeys. You got a water source here. Also Grand Pierre Creek, which we're gonna take a ride down and look at, runs through the back side of this property and actually splits it. You'll have to go through the creek and up on the other side to access some more of this property, which also makes it really nice because you always have a water source for your animals to get into. Uh, there's several places on this farm that we can use to establish food plots and uh, stick with us. We're going to take a tour. Maybe we can get lucky and find a turkey. So as you pull in the driveway, how nice is that to see two trees that are probably six inches around that a big old buck has been rubbing on. And you can see some of the diversity of the property here as it transfers into pines. And then you got some lower area with some ash and stuff like that. Little bottom area for the deer and the turkeys to run around in. The property lays kind of like a rectangle and it goes back at an angle like this. Your property line's right here. As you can see, I have my Onyx maps that shows our property line. So when we come in, this driveway kicks in and goes around here to the house. So there's a little angle of it here, but then it angles back up that way toward that tall ridge over there, which is Grand Pierre Creek in between here and there. And we're gonna ride back down that way. And we're gonna do a little showcase of this property. There's a set of power lines over here that would be a good place for some tree stands and to be able to put in some food plots as well as this area right here. As you can see, there's a nice established gravel driveway that comes into this piece of property. right here would be a perfect place to plant maybe some clover and some chicory some good tall trees right back in there to be able to set your tree stands So here's one of the cool things that they have on this property. It's an old horse barn. It was set up with some stalls. Looks like they've tried to stiffen it up a little bit with some newer wood and they put a newer metal roof on it. Be a good place to hang a deer. Keep a tractor under it. 
during the summertime when you're out here working, keep it out of the weather. It's just kind of one of the cool things you see a lot of here in Southern Illinois is some of these old barns. Pretty neat the way they were built. It's actually got an upstairs. You could probably walk up there and use that as a deer hunting area if you put some new, new stairs on it. If you look back here, this would be a great place. It's nice and high. You can put a big turnip food plot up here. Here's the power line easement I was telling you about, which we'll drive down there. It goes up and it sits higher. It's another great place where you can plant some winter wheat or some oats. And then you can plant some of that in here too. I mean, this is a really large area. You could, you could do turnips, you could do wheat, you could do oats. You could actually put some clover and some chicory in this as well. Like I said, this the way this is set up right here, a new set of steps going up into that thing and you'd have your own little covered shooting house overlooking a food plot. And as you can see, everything slants down. It's going down into the creek bottoms, into these big timbered bottoms right here that are slapped full of red oaks and white oaks, which is all your hard mass for the, for the deer to eat. So this right here is a little creek draw and this is where your pond runoff comes and it comes down through here so there's numerous places on this property where there's always year-round water for your critters and then of course that's just going to be a natural travel corridor great pinch points for you to set your stands in as you take this power line down here it's going to take you right to the edge of the property line where it meets the Shawnee National Forest. Like I said before, this 110 acre farm is surrounded by 33,653 acres of Shawnee National Forest. This is truly a hunter's paradise. This is the piece of property that you look for. You can buy 100 and basically 111 acres and it's gonna hunt like 33,000 and change. So as we roll up here, you can see that this is the property line. And it cuts back at an angle down through there and goes down toward Grand Pierre Creek and down into the creek bottoms. See, there's another trail right there too. Publish it. We have a little trail system that goes through here. So the property's set up and there's a, a lot of good trail systems. As you go come down those power lines, you can see this trail here, and it goes back out toward the pond. But what this does is this gives you, with this little creek bottom in this holler here, it gives you a place to be able to put a stand in one of these trees, and you can clean this up and actually put uh, a food plot or something like that in here, and allow the deer to come in and out and have a small security area with food where they can come out and, and eat and not feel pressured in the wide open. That's one of the things you want to do on a lot of your properties is you want to have small food plots that let the deer feel like they have security and they'll come out and eat. So this is even further from the barn. As you look over there, you can see the, the just see the top of the roof barn right there. But it actually drops down even more and you come down into this bluff. And your Shawnee National Forest is just on the other side of that. Again, this is more area where you could plant there's so much open space here, just around the house, that it's right on the edge of the woods that you can use to plant food plots. And then you can walk down here. And because they've timbered some of this out, it's created thickets and bedding areas, but yet you still have all your hardwood mass trees with your white oaks and your red oaks. That's all in the Shawnee National Forest, which is public hunting. And a lot of this property is landlocked. So you don't have to worry about people accessing it easily. You have all this that's accessible to you and you only and to whatever property owners live around here that their property backs up to. So as you can see behind me, everything becomes a natural pinch point right here. You can see the ridges above there. You can see where it flattens out and everything's coming down to it. Nice little area down in here with some sycamores and some ash. There's still a bunch of hardwood trees in here with your oaks and stuff. There's a 
little part of the creek that fingers off of Grand Pierre itself. Again, you got more water. You got your bedding areas up here. These are all trails that you can use to walk down and access your tree stands quietly that you put up and, and set up. And again, you, this is all Shawnee National Forest for a long ways. People can come in around from the other side, but they're, they're not gonna come in even cl remotely close to your property. One, the creek's gonna keep them from doing that, and two, the roads are a long distance away. If you pull this up on Google Earth or you use Onyx Maps or any type of aerial map system, you're gonna see that you have an enormous chunk of Shawnee National Forest that is landlocked and was accessible by you. So we can come up out of here and then we'll go around the other side and drop down to Grand Pierre Creek. So we're to the north of the house here and he's got some more trails, bush hog down in here to be able to access the creek bottom. Grand Pierre Creek is down this way. We're gonna kind of walk back over this way and go down to Grand Pierre Creek. But you can see that there's some decent sized pine trees. There's still some oaks in here. There's some underbrush that provides good browse for the deer and stuff like that. You've got trails to be able to slip in here quietly and access all your tree stands to keep you from spooking the game out of here. Also to be able to get down to the creek and go up the other side of that ridge and access the rest of that property. You'll see in the videos where there's several different types of apple trees and pear trees that he has planted up here. This here is in CRP. He's not mowing all that right now. As you can see, the house is up there. As this stuff grows up and thickens up, it provides really good nesting areas for your turkeys, areas for quail and rabbit. Also the deer, as you can see in here, it's just covered with deer tracks walking through here. There's some good tracks. You can really see them right in here. I've just been walking all through here. That's what all this is. This is all deer tracks as they're walking through here using these as travel corridors. Again, you could, you could leave this as CRP or you could plant it. As you can see on the back side of the house here, they got a little fenced off courtyard. There's some pear and apple trees in it. Then your apple trees are just on the other side of this CRP that there's seven trees there, apple and pear, and then there's six or seven more inside the little courtyard. And there's a gate opened up there and you can see where the deer tracks and the deer are going up actually up in there. And down there you can see there's some younger oak trees and some nice timber it's going back down into that creek bottom this is that finger that we were over on the other side of the property at earlier as it comes up through here and it branches out and hits the actual Grand Pierre Creek itself There's another trail where it goes back down into the bottom there. So as we get here up on this trail, you can see where they have another trail that goes back down the Lord along the creek that way that goes along the side of this thicket here. And you got your mature timber and your oaks and stuff good places for you to set your stand because your bedding area is going to be this big thicket right here. And then there's another trail that comes around here as we walk back down in here. There's a nice little open area down here that should have enough sunlight where you can plant you another food plot and be on the top side of this creek bottom 
be able to pull the deer up out of these bottoms and come up here in the top. You can see down here, you can plant this and as you're coming in, there's a nice little like cul-de-sac area here, but there should be enough sunlight that allows you to come in here and have another food plot sitting up here on the top, as well as having all your hard mass oak trees that'll provide food for your deer and turkeys. So this right here is Grand Pierre Creek. As you can see by the tracks, the deer are traveling this quite heavily. We're walking right down. There's a nice pool down there, which will always hold water. This creek, when I was here a couple weeks ago, was about three foot deep and it was flowing pretty good. <laughs> 